The show starts in one minute. Please remember to replace the speaker on the post when you leave the theater. And now, on with the show. Hello and welcome to episode 69 of Saturday Matinee Theater, brought to you by your friends at the Long Box Crusade. We are here in Gotham City in a recording studio set up in one of the many unused rooms in stately Wayne Manor. I am your host, Jared Albrecht, the yard sale artist, and joining me, as always, is the Robin to my Batman is Pat Sampson, a.k.a. DJ Christados. And how are we feeling today, boy, man, wonder, Christados? Well, Jared, I'm glad you asked. You know, as much as I've been talking on a podcast, I think I might change my name from DJ Christados to Golden Throat. <laughs> There's... You know, because my tone is just so golden and right, <laughs> right. Um, comes out of my throat. Let's run that by HR. We'll talk to Laurel about that. I all heard right, her right, a recent appearance Laura. of Monday Monthly Movie Muck about where she was talking about gravity, where she says she didn't work here. That's, that's that I've right. gotten a cancellation. I, or, I, uh, yeah. I agree. She doesn't work here. <laughs> She's employed here. She just doesn't work here. But, you know, it's it's the we'd be doing a lot of remote work lately, so you know, okay, she may not show up all the we, time. We'll run Golden Throat by her on that. Okay, good. All right, all right. Also joining me is the laziest Alfred Pennyworth of all time is my brother Jason the Weasel Skull Albrick. And how are you today, Jason? I'm quiet quitting. I'm tired of this nonsense. These two running around getting their tails whooped. They're like, you know, just bleeding all over the carpet coming in after their adventures. You know, they're mangling up this clock coming in and out. Can't keep the time right on this clock. So I'm just going to sit here, watch my stories, and uh, just keep checking out Craigslist to see if there's any job openings. Maybe the Man of Steel needs some uh, some help there at the Fortress of Solitude. I don't know. But I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> it's probably easier to keep the Fortress of Solitude clean, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't right. tread. He can float, you know, so, like, he doesn't get, like, mm -hmm. doesn't tread in dust and... You know, doesn't really like bleed at all. No. <laughs> so, if he is, something's really wrong. I would normally at this point welcome our good friend Elvin the Dark Web Williams as our commissioner, but um, he's out and about somewhere in the city of Gotham. <laughs> we don't know what he's up to, what he's doing. He might be going under his alias, uh, Chuck White. There's another joke in there. I'm not going to use it. <laughs> yes. All Get the off. pieces are there. Quiet right there. <laughs> all right. It might be the White Web. <laughs> He's on the on the on the white web. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Well, anyways, let's get into discussing this uh, episode of Chapter Ten, and uh, we will go with Pat with the show description. Hit us with it, Pat. All right. Saturday matinee theater is a retro review show brought to you by the Lombox Crusade, where we will be taking you back to the past with some potentially overlooked retro awesomeness in the realm of television, movie serials, or films. Basically. If it's vintage and it's kind of forgotten, we're going to dig it up. On this episode, we'll continue our dive into the 1943's Batman serial. 1943's Batman serial was produced by Rudolph C. Forfo. It starred Lewis Wilson as Batman and Douglas Croft as Robin. So grab your batarang, fire up the Batmobile, and swing into adventure. But don't forget, this is a job for Chuck White. <laughs> yes, aren't they all? <laughs> Hand it over to Jason for this episode's info. Let's take a look, or in this case, a listen to a commercial that we've been playing at the time this episode was released back in 1943. So help to get us in the right time frame of mind, if you will, and transport us back to the 40s. For this episode's commercial retro rewind, we have the RCA radio. 
See these two portable radios? Well, watch this. Let her go, Betsy. Sorry, friend. You old-style portables have to go. But look at our new RCA Victor portable radio. Came through without a chip. Here's the world's first and only portable radio in the non-breakable impact case. So rugged, it's the only radio case with a five-year guarantee against chipping, cracking, or breaking in normal use. Of course, a tube might jar loose, but that's easily fixed. The important thing is RCA Victor's non-breakable impact case means no chipping, no cracking, no breaking. And hear that tone. It's RCA Victor's great golden throat sound. See the world's only portables with the non-breakable impact case as low as $27.95 at your RCA Victor dealer. And so what do we think of this commercial? Jason, go ahead. You get the first word. You didn't leave in the middle of it. <laughs> it's what I get for sticking around. I get to go first. All right. Well, it's interesting. I just kind of assumed like all the electronic products back in those days were made out of metal and would be impact resistant. But that right. one radio, man, that came apart like a $30 suit, man. I don't know like what it was made out of. I, I wonder if this was something where like plastics were starting to become more prevalent in commercial products. And RCA is like saying, ah, old boy, still the best. Let's use this metal stuff. And uh, at first I thought, well, it would be a lot heavier, right? Wouldn't that, um, you know, wouldn't that detract from the product a little bit? Cause you want lightweight if you're running around with your RCA portable or with your portable radio, non RCA brand. But Linda, she seemed to handle that both radios just fine. Had one in each hand. So, I'm not sure what's happening. What makes their radio so much more rugged? And I'm curious. Uh, it's got to be the engineering. Got to be. It won't break. It won't jam. <laughs> you might lose it. What do you say? A tube? Or a tube a, might come loose. Tube, but that's okay. But, yeah. You can fix that. I, I like how he tossed it in there because I think I think he well knew if you dropped his radio from that ladder, a tube was coming loose. You could have to fix that. Oh, Pat, what'd you think? It was interesting to actually see, you know, an old radio commercial like that, that they were selling radios because at the time, that's probably, you know, a lot of people that was their entertainment. If it wasn't on, if you didn't have the TV, you, you would have the radio and you would take it with you wherever you go. Do you think about portability as we've grown up through being kids and all that now, you know, now it's everything's on your phone and whatever, you know, when before, remember when you used to have that cassette deck and the old cassette decks were like long one. It mm -hmm. was big and you can, <laughs> then it got portable and then you got the boom boxes. And I wonder what the, how much, what the battery you had to use to charge that thing. That's a good question. Uh, it wasn't one of those ones where you would crank it. No, and, like a know, weather like radio, a, like emergency weather radio where you can crank power. To yeah. It. No, I tell you what my big thought of it was near the end. He mentioned that you could buy one of those for something like twenty four dollars. I like got that. it right. Yeah, it's twenty seven ninety five. Twenty seven ninety five. So twenty eight dollars. And it got to got made me thinking. I was like, that's pretty. That's fancy money back in the forties. Well, well, that was my question. What's the current value? Well, and that's where I was going to go with this. If you okay. were going to buy just a portable AM FM radio in two thousand and twenty two, I don't see me paying more than twenty dollars. <laughs> so it's like. You know how you talk about, oh, candy bars used to be a nickel. Like, radios used to be more expensive <laughs> than they are now. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, I could walk into the to the Goodwill and pick up a, an AM, FM radio, maybe with a cassette player, maybe with a CD mm -hmm. player for 20 bucks or less easily. So it's kind of interesting how the economics of that work. But like you said, Pat, that was like you wanted entertainment. You had to have yeah. a radio in 1943. And you don't want that radio to, to break when you drop it, when it falls off the back of your pickup or when you climb up a ladder and drop it on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I could see, you know, you're climbing up the ladder. It's the fall time. You're going to clean out those gutters on the roof. You know, you want that radio with you as you're, you're playing your cool music. Mm -hmm. I will say this, though. The, the boom boxes of the 80s have mm -hmm. definitely held, if not increased their value. That is an, always an item I'm looking for on the yard sale hunt. People still pay top dollar, a couple hundred dollars for a good boom box. Because most of those boom boxes, you know, they look great. They look so 80s, right? And then mm -hmm. most of them have an auxiliary port. So you can plug your phone into the boom box and get the phone music with the cool Oh, yeah, box. that's true. Nice. Because cool. I found that out. Because I found one at a yard sale a few years ago. Uh, correction, it was an estate sale. 
Mm. I bought it in a state That's a yard sale. sale, but fancy, but inside. Yeah. So <laughs> it was like 20 bucks. And I was like, I, I looked them up on eBay. I was like, wow, these sell pretty good. So I took it home. I saw, I think I got like, sold it for like two fifty. That's one of those ones where I, I just straight up asked the buyer. I sent him a message. like, all right, clue me in. What makes this so cool? And that's what he told me. is like, you get the great look and you can plug your phone into it. Uh, that's why people want. Cool. Speaking about estate sales, here's a question for you guys. If Alfred did an estate sale, what would he be getting rid of? What do you think Alfred would get rid of at an estate sale in Wayne Manor? Oof. Mm. Mm. Probably not the clock. It'd have to stay. <laughs> clock has to stay. Yeah. yeah. The desk? Yeah. Well, ever since they're always messing with him, you know, when they're like, oh, let's shoot the radium gun at Alfred. <laughs> that would be hilarious, right? I would say he'd probably just sell all their clothes. They just come home one day, no clothes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or the carpet. He would go bare wood floor so that they, he could hear their steps coming out of the clock. They can't sneak up on him. Like sneak up on me anymore. Maybe that's, that's what they Rega. <laughs> He could sell uh, Robin's clothes from when he was, you know, uh, yeah. uh, how old? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody want to hazard a guess at what twenty eight dollars in nineteen forty three would be with today? I'm gonna say twenty eight dollars back then is probably close to one hundred fifty bucks today. Would you like to hazard a guess, Pat? I will go yeah, seventy five. Four hundred seventy nine dollars oh. and fifty two cents. <laughs> You're paying five hundred bucks for that radio. <laughs> for radio. Wow! For that that tube better not come loose for five hundred dollars. Um, no kidding. That's amazing. I tell you what, uh, when I Pat, you know what I'm talking about. Jason knows too. When I was in high school, I always go jogging. Right, this was, this was when the times with the CD players, portable ones. You can't go jogging with those because they mm-hmm. jostle and they skip. You still have mm-hmm. to have your cassette. Remember, Sony made that yellow one, like weatherproof. Yeah, yeah. That sucker was well made. You could throw that across the street. It would still play. It would still yeah. play. <laughs> I remember the first time I got an MP3 player, and it only held like maybe a dozen songs. <laughs> My on. first would hold a dozen songs, too. But, you know, it was so cool because it was so light, and I could take it to the field with me. And, you know, like you said, with the CD player, it was bigger, heavier. You couldn't really move with it. You had to take your CDs with you. So I was like, this is so cool. I just put this in my pocket. I would always bring my CDs with me. CDs nuts. I'll take it then. You guys All right. There you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, now that we're in our 1940s mindset, here's Jason in the role of Delvin with the episode information. This episode is Chapter 10, and it was titled Flying Spies. It was released in September 17th, 1943. The director was Lambert Hillier. And the writers were Victor McLeod, Leslie Swabacker, and Harry L. Fraser. A guest star, J. Carol Nice as Dr. Tito Daka, and William Austin as Alfred. As a reminder, all 15 episodes are available on YouTube. We highly encourage you to watch this episode before proceeding with this podcast because not only is it just more fun that way, but Jared is about to give a synopsis about this episode. And then we're going to discuss it. So there are probably some spoilers heading your way. Again, if you haven't watched this episode, we recommend you pause here, go check it out on YouTube, and then come back to join our discussion. And about 20 minutes per episode is not that big of a time demand. For those of you who are watching along with us, we'd love to hear your insights. Don't forget to comment about the show on Twitter using the hashtag, I'm following Batman. Pat. Hashtag, I'm following Batman. Jared. Hashtag, I'm following Batman. And hashtag, I'm following Chuck White. And with that, let's turn it over to Jared for this episode's summary. When we last saw Batman, he was at the docks and a gangplank was crashing down on him. Luckily, he came to just in time to roll off the dock and join Robin in the nets below. These nets saved his life. And you know what? I almost forgot about the goon they had trussed up back in the Batcave. <laughs> Batman and Robin didn't forget, and they tossed him out at police HQ. Meanwhile, Doc learns of a new inbound radium shipment, which makes him happy. 
What doesn't make him happy is learning that Batman survived the mine explosion from episode eight. In fact, Doc is wondering if there isn't an entire team of Batman out there foiling his plans. Speaking of which, Batman is also tipped off to the incoming radium shipment by his government contacts, and he decides that the Chuck White persona might be the key to stopping DACA. Much to Linda's disgust, she's not a Chuck White fan. But Bruce, as Chuck White, successfully infiltrates the gang and springs a trap on them with the help of Alfred and Robin. And they go to collect the radium that's being delivered by airdrop. After changing into Batman, Bruce steals a car from the goons to go intercept the falling radium, but the car is shot in the tire, and Batman goes careening off the road in a fiery explosion. Okay, guys, lots to talk about in this episode. Lots to talk about in this episode. Pat, I know you have a booklet full of uh, notes there. So which one is the most burning, sir? You know, I'm going to go with a what the kind of a low kind of what the is the beginning of it. You know, this one was what, 17 minutes or so, but a good three to four minutes of that was all recappy kind of a stuff that was going on. And this is the maybe second or third time we're starting to see that creep into the actual video time. It's like they're trying to stretch it out a little bit longer. Mm, A little padded. Yeah. A a lot of recap at the beginning. Yeah. They showed, they showed pretty much the entire fight scene from the end of the last episode. They did. Yeah. Yeah, Like the whole thing. I thought they were going to chop it off. Like, you know, there was a fight on the dock and blah, blah, blah. And then they show the catwalk or the gangplank or whatever that thing was you know, coming down on him and that was it. And then, you know, let's, let's get into the action to see how we got out of it. But yeah, it wasn't bad, but it's just, I could do without, and I can see that they're really trying to, you know, stretch it out. Fair enough. Jason, what do you got? I'm going to also add another, what the onto the pile as our Cape crusader dumped that, uh, trust up bad guy onto the steps of the police department. It got me to thinking like, if I'm a cop, and this guy is trussed up. What does that note say? Because I hope it like summarizes what he did. Because I'm like, what do I charge him for? I mean, you're just <laughs> dropping bodies <laughs> off on my doorstep. And I don't know why. <laughs> you know, so I hope there's some detail <laughs> in that note to say, okay, you know, he's, you know, <laughs> criminal conspiracy, aggravated assault, or whatever it is that, you know, Batman thinks he's going to be tried for. But just to have bodies trussed up on your doorstep is, is probably a little bit confusing for your run of the mill police officer. It's, I like to think it's a hand drawn, just sad face, and then the bat symbol at the bottom to sign it. That's all. That's all I gave him. Just frowning face. This doesn't help me. I mean, I- <laughs> I, although I will give him credit because when Robin was like, "Hey, we got to take care of so and so," I was like, "What the hell is he talking about?" <laughs> and then they were like, "Yeah, he's still like the bat cave," and I was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot there was a dude back in the bat cave." <laughs> he didn't. Did he have a mask? Did they? I can't remember if they had a hood on him or not. They blindfolded him for the trip out. I saw when he yeah. threw, they threw him out of the car, he had a blindfold on. But they just left them alert in the cave. Yeah. Remember, because they duped him into giving yeah. away the location of the Sphinx Club. Because mm-hmm. they put that phone in. And they, that was Which was cool. cool. That was cool. And I honestly, I thought, oh, that's kind of cool, the serial, too. Because I would have just, like, forgotten. Like, if I was writing that show, I was like, okay, we're done with that guy. But no, man, they were like, there's still somebody hanging out in the back. The cool, like, you know, three days later, he comes out of the clock like, I need food. <laughs> God help me. <laughs> He's in there eating bats. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I, I, I thought that was kind of cool. But, uh, all right. I guess it's back to you, Pat. What do you what else you got in your ponderous tome of notes there? Well, another thing I have is how did Robin get in the net? He jumped into the water and I it went splash. Right. And somehow then, ended up in the net. I feel like he climbed back into the nets, but I don't know that he was wet. He okay. wasn't. I was, I was going to bring that up, too, because, like, that perm of his was perfectly dry. Like, you, something, something's off. I was kind of like, wait a minute. How did Robin get in there? And how long had he been in there before Batman kind of rolled into it? I don't know. These nets came in handy, though. Came it did. It in handy. Did. All right. I got some thoughts, but I, I want to see what Jason's got next. Uh, what do you got, Jason? Oh, gosh, there's a couple of things to say about this. I will say that they kind of fooled me with the spy on the plane because I thought he was going to jump out. Right? I was thinking that, too. I was thinking that, too. I thought okay. he was awfully nervous for 
<laughs> for a guy who just had a toss right. the window. Right. And then like when, when he opens up, when he cracks open the window, obviously I guess, you know, in 1943, they're not flying at such high speed, but you would have thought that there'd be some air wind pressure ripping through that, mm-hmm. through that bathroom. Open Somebody windy, yeah. noticed. But yeah, because he even as he walked back there, I was like, he doesn't have a parachute. How's he going to fit through that window? Cracks <laughs> 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 it open. I was like, ah, oh, Jason, you're a dummy, man. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't have any idea how big the radium was going to be either. I didn't either. It was like I don't know, yeah. shoebox. I was smaller than a shoebox, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was really. He seemed really nervous, and so I thought, okay, he's gonna he's gonna have to jump out of this plane. I thought he was going to pull a DB Cooper, you know, like hold the plane up. That's what then, I was thinking too. And then go out. So, so yeah, I felt kind of like a moron. After, I was like, okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what he was going to do either. So don't feel bad. So, so I'm so still get on me. I'm still wrapping my head around this episode being called Flying Spies. And there was just the one spy that the was actually guy, yeah. flying. <laughs> yeah. Well, one that we know of. Maybe there's others coming in on other flights. We don't know. <laughs> How cool does it got to be that? you get a personal message while you're flying. Yeah. You know, like, oh, they radioed the captain to tell you this message. Drop that radium, son. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the radio we got hidden in the bathroom, jump that. What is it? Was it written in normal, just the handwriting? Drop the radium here. Uh, it's probably some kind of code. code. They probably had a code for like, if you needed to drop it at various points, you know. Okay. Because you would think whoever had to, you know, decipher the code or, or decipher it when it came to the plane or whatever. I'll say this about DACA. I mean, he's got his operation on lock. His just his men are not up to his standards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Once again, uh, even though he's been foiled many times, uh, I'd still say DACA is probably the most successful guy in this whole. <laughs> this whole say he's taken the least amount of butt weapons. That's for sure. And while his plans may have been foiled, uh, he he doesn't have brain damage. So there's there's that. So, which brings me to the thing I wanted to bring up now that we've kind of gone a couple of rounds. Am I crazy or does Chuck White not fight better than Batman? (laughs) Because Chuck White defeated the guys he was fighting out in that field. Yep. And got a way to turn into Batman. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, though, is do we count this as a victory? Because basically he just he just ran away. Right. He didn't really defeat the guy. I mean, he put him on their butts, though, so he so he, yeah, he didn't away. get away. He, I told, yeah. okay. he won, so he was able to escape after that. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I mean, he's pretty much burnt the Chuck White ID, though, because like he ran away, and like six seconds later, Batman <laughs> came in. Like, it was like, hmm. And then I thought it was pretty clever. The bad guys, you know, they still didn't know whether or not they could fully trust him, so they left him alone, and then they put a guy to watch him to see what he did. And when he tried yeah. to wander off, that's when they were like, oh, this guy ain't. Ain't kosher. I was like, dang, man. So sometimes Daka's guys have got it together. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. But I I, I get never ending pleasure out of Linda's hatred of Chuck <laughs> That was funny. That was funny. Yeah, she was he, like... He's like, he, he's not so bad looking. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, he looks at a candidly alike Bruce Wayne. <laughs> same height, same build, same eyes. She got all oh, my you will you why don't you take him to lunch instead yeah, of me? Man. You and your she best friend Bruce Chuck quick. White. Yeah. And then Bruce was like, every episode, man, every episode. She was like, I guess you forgot we had this date last night. She was like, Oh, Dick and I got to hanging out at the where were they? Like at the carnival or Amusement something. Carnival or something. Yeah. <laughs> we were having such a great time. Oh man, every episode he's jerked to her. Yeah. What rides was Dick really able to go on? And, yeah, and good question. It? Height difference? Were there certain rise or age level yeah. that he could do? I, I don't know. So you have well, to take some blood pressure medicine before he got on the roller coaster. We don't know. And is that why Chuck White went along with him, just in case Dick couldn't go? At least Batman could go on a ride with another guy, or you know, just a you know the buddy system. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Albert Elvis mentions in the chat. Uh, wasn't there an episode where Doc is going to suggest there are multiple different Batman? And it's actually in this episode this one, that, yeah. that it dawned on Daka. He's like, man, this guy survives everything. Maybe there's an army of Batman out there. And I thought that was kind of a neat take, too. Like, Doc is, mm-hmm. he's a sharp guy, man. Um, uh, again, it, 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 this this uh, serial is kind of infamous for its anti-Japanese sentiment. And, and yeah, as we found out, it was a, a white guy playing Daka. But they haven't played him goofy or, or uh, incapable. Like, he's 
sharp as a tack. Like, <laughs> like that having that thought, like maybe there's more than one bat because we blew him up in the mine. <laughs> I think he got ran over by a train. Like, I, I mean, he's clearly wrong, but it's like an interesting and good line of thinking. And Daka is sharp, man. He's he's sharp. Like Jason said, he's just got execution problems with his goons yeah i I think i think his problem is is that he's the one always answering the phone he answered the phone like three times in this one (laughs) i'm like don't you can you just have one of your goons answer the phone now and just oh yeah that's important for you you know what what he's doing and uh for those of you watching i'll add the banner He's picking, he's picking up, up, the, up phone. the phone. <laughs> <laughs> he picks up the phone. He's all business when he's on that phone, too. I like his his yeah. style. He's like, proceed. You know, <laughs> no I'm glad you guys brought this up, because we talked about this earlier. One of the fun facts was the, the part of the main villain was originally, and J. Carroll Nation was hired to play the Joker, but they changed it the last minute because of World War II, and they wanted to make it more... Uh, you know, patriotic, if you will, at the time and all that that we've gone into. But I- I'm almost glad he's Dr. Daka because this is not Joker like behavior. <laughs> Joker's not this calculating. He's not this, uh, well, ruthless, maybe, but you know what I'm saying? He's not as cool and collected as Daka is. And I-, I mean, I just don't think Joker would have fit for this story as well as this Dr. Daka does. And I think if anybody out there from DC Comics actually listens to our show, you need to do- bring back some Dr. Daka as a Batman villain. <laughs> That would be kind of cool. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool. Dust off Captain America can have some Red Skull. I mean, Batman can have some Dr. Daka, Dr. right? Dr. Daka, why not? All right. Any Okay, I, this is a silly question. Pat, what do you got left on your notes? <laughs> well, I got a few things left. We kind of talked about them on this last go-around and, and some of the different things. But, you know, I, I like some of the things that Daka said. Well, he's just a, or they said Chuck White was a cheap gangster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like how, you know, he goes to that club just trying to, there's nobody else in there. Me, I think there was one other guy sitting at the bar or something like that. So he's just kind of hanging out and, you know, we got to see Chuck White have some fun and just be cool. And I think that's what really made it interesting. Yeah, we got to see Chuck White be Chuck White. It's mm-hmm. a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun watching him do that. Oh, yeah. It's not, yeah. And we have some pat points. Thanks, Kathy, for pointing that out. <laughs> and well, speaking I, about. Oh, sorry. I, I wanted to throw one one point in on that. Um, okay on that Chuck White that you brought up, I thought it was really smart of him to position Alfred in the cab. cab. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like, again, I really enjoy the mental elements of the Batman character and the Dr. Daka and this kind of mental chess game they're going with. We saw it again with the painting in the little waiting room as Daka was, you know, with his eyes up into the painting mm-hmm. and spy on Batman. and But Batman's already looked around, or I'm sorry, Chuck White has looked around the room and he's like, okay, this, you know, this painting looks suspect. I'm going to sit over here. And so all the little chess moves I'm still really enjoying. That's a yeah, good thing. I, I got to say, again, if someone from DC is listening, <laughs> just contact <laughs> me. You know, how, you know how DC came out with Batman 89, the comic book series? Ooh, yeah. I want them to contact me about Batman 43. <laughs> I, I want to write <laughs> a story with Batman, Chuck White, Dr. Daka as, as the cool and capable villain that we've learned him to be. I want this to happen. Like, I want, I want basically, I want like Daka in, you know, 43 to have cracked some code with his, with his uh, scientists for like a, a fountain of youth formula. So like, he's still mm. like the same age now. And yeah. <laughs> like he, he and Batman somehow. So is Batman. <laughs> he, <laughs> he and Batman or better yet, make it, make it to where he stops aging to make it a Batman beyond tale where Terry McGinnis right. has to go up against this dude, Daka who has just hated Batman since 1943. <laughs> I would totally read that. I would, Call or it could DC be Doctor Daka's progeny, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm down for that. We got a good idea. Anyway, what else you got, Pat? Is that it? Any more Pat points? Uh, no, I got a few more here, and we're oh, gonna here we into- go. Everybody, lay back. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. We're just gonna get into the the fights, the bat fights, right? And I, in my count, I have bat- <laughs> I have Batman fights the gangsters in the beginning. <laughs> Batman fights the net. Batman fights the game plank or whatever that was that fell on him. Dodged it. Yeah, well, well, yeah, if we fought, he didn't move. He, he juked. And then uh, later on, Batman fights some gangsters. But right. in the bonus round, we have Chuck fights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, Chuck fights. Chuck fights. Chuck fights a sealed door. He pounded on it. Couldn't get out. Chuck fights creepy 
picture with no eyes. And then, then he fought some team. Chuck fights some gangsters. Yeah, he did pretty good. He did better than Batman. (laughs) He did. (laughs) He did not take a butt whoop. So, all right, we, we have to address that now that we're through, I think, most of Pat's points. How do we feel? We were all very down on Batman's fighting prowess. Uh, last episode, because you say L after L after L after L. Now, he didn't necessarily take an L on this one. He's fighting. I think he held his own pretty well. He's, I, I assume, saw the parachuting radium, decided to make that the primary objective, stole the car, took off after it. So, A, how do we think about Batman's fighting prowess in this one? And uh, B, what did you think about the cliffhanger ending? And Jason, you go ahead. Yeah, I say this is at least a partial redemption for the fighting prowess. He definitely has taken a lot more L's than W's, than he's earned W's during this uh, uh-huh. series. But uh-huh. between the Chuck Chuck White persona and as Batman uh, to, to fight and create the space, of course, he kind of left. Uh, but no, Boy Wonder was in the car, too, wasn't he? So, yeah, they both Did were he able... get in the car? I wasn't sure. Oh, wait, I don't know. It, like the one that was blew up at the end, I think it was yeah. just Batman. Okay, yeah, because if it? I was Robin, I'd be like, what the... <laughs> 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 I mean, and you know, Robin, bless his heart, man. He, he shouldn't be Dick. We should call him Rick, which is short for Ricketts, because he's walking around like all slouched and he's got those skinny little arms. He's not gonna, he's not gonna last very long against those guys. But you know, they did, uh, they did do pretty well. And then again, I think that Batman's mental prowess is definitely uh, still on point uh, all through the series. Really, I've really enjoyed that aspect of it. So. I'd say it's a, at least a partial redemption this episode. All right. All right, Pat, what do you think about fighting prowess and the cliffhanger ending? I'm going to agree with Jason on this one. Uh, his fighting prowess was pretty, pretty good. This was more a Bruce centric kind of episode, I guess, mm-hmm. um, with him at not only as Batman, but more as Chuck White in this. You didn't see a lot of Robin. You just see him kind of spying on the building where, you know, Bruce went into uh, to wait to get to pass the physical fitness or whatever Doc had to do, look at him. And then after that, him and Alfred just kind of followed along in the car until there was time to, you know, get back into the car and change real quick and then go back out and fight. So I think it made pretty well for for Bruce on this one and his fighting style. Because, man, he took out those guys. Not only did he take the guys out as Chuck White to get away. Right. But then he comes back around and kicks their butts again to get in the car. Mm hmm. Batman stole their car. It blew up, you know, seemingly with Batman in it. I, I'm guessing he must have rolled out the last minute. You know, we'll Batman see. was like an early Grand Theft Auto before it was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, suppose you're right. All right. That is that as far as the episode is concerned. Uh, the episode was about 17 minutes. You take out the padding in it, it was probably more like. 13 or 14 minutes, but as mm-hmm. you can uh, hear from our discussion, there was a lot a lot going on. In the chat, Courtney Holland says, I hate cliffhangers, so serials are not going to be for you, Courtney, because they were all about the cliffhanger. Uh, but I, I do appreciate you tuning in to uh, talk about them with us. With that, I'm going to get the fun facts with Jared. This episode's fun facts is I just decided to kind of do a bit of a deep dive into one of the other actors. Uh, we've already talked about Lewis Wilson and how he's Michael Wilson's real father. Um, and if you don't know who Michael Wilson is, he's a producer behind the James Bond films him and his stepsister, Barbara. And I always think that's fascinating. This dude's real life dad is Batman and his stepfather was Albert R. Broccoli, the guy who produced the Bond films. This kid had the best life ever. Mm-hmm. But we're not going into Lewis Wilson. I've already done that. We're going to talk about Linda Page. So let's talk about Linda Page, where she came from and how she got this role. All right. She was born in Canada, which is just north of here. (laughs) She's Canadian born. She's from Canada. She has starred in over 40 films from 1942 to 1958. She just stopped doing movies in 58. It's like, I'm done. How she got into films She got recognized by winning the Miss California pageant in 1940. That's how she got on people's radar. They're like, oh, this really beautiful woman who has some good acting abilities won this pageant, so let's bring her into Hollywood. But guess what? She had to give up that crown for Miss California in 1940. Scandal, scandal, scandal. Chuck White. Chuck White, yep. He ran the whole thing. Now, what had happened was, I think, uh, I may have my months wrong, but in my head, I think the pageant was held in December. And you had to be 18 
and she was 17, like 17 and 10 months when she won it. Oh, and that man. they got found out and uh, they had to take the crown away from her, give it to the second place winner. So she was decrowned as Miss California from 1940. Hey, but jokes on uh, whoever the second place winner was because she went on to have a pretty good film career from 1942 to 58. She passed away in 1995 at the age of 72. Uh, she had retired down in Florida, which uh, if you're a United States listener, you know, when you reach that age, you move to Florida because it's the law. So there you have it. That is Linda Page's career. And I thought that was kind of interesting. With that, Batarang rating time. All right. We were kind of we were kind of down on the last one. We were like barely giving it threes. I don't Delvin might have given it a two. I can't remember. I think or we just squeaked by at a three. Uh, what are we thinking this time around? Pat, I'll let you go first. You know, I'm saving what I was going to put down until our conversation. And at this moment, you're hearing it first. I haven't written it down. I have on my, my thing like a five out of nothing. I am going to give this a four. All because right. I liked, even though it was short, I liked the character moments here with Bruce and with DACA. I thought it was really interesting. And it kind of made sense about the plan to get the radium, just to have the guy flying over and drop it off. And it was a pretty good story overall. I don't disagree one bit, Pat, but let's find out what Jason scored it before we get to mine. But yeah, I, I, I'm feeling you, Pat. I'm feeling it. I agree with Pat. It's a four for me as well. Agreed a little bit too much padding at the beginning, but overall, we got to see some good action, both fighting as Batman and as Chuck White. We got to see Dr. Daka again, just kind of being a, a real class A villain for Batman, which I think is impressive for somebody I'd never heard of until this serial. I love Miss Page's uh, reaction to Chuck White and that kind of running <laughs> <Disgust>. uh, <laughs> that running joke line. I love, we talked about Batman's strategy versus DACA's strategy. That's really cool. And we got Radium back in the game again, too. So, I mean, pretty much all the pieces are falling together. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of redemption here. I'm going to go four for this. You know, uh, Jason just reminded me too that I'm starting to wonder if Jake Carroll Nash didn't like work on this serial for like a day and a half because if I've started to realize he's never outside of his own set, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I feel yeah. like they shot all of his scenes in like a day and they just keep plugging him in where he's where he's back at the office like reacting to things. Anyways, I'm going to join you guys. I don't know if it I don't know if this episode truly deserves a four or I just feel better about it because Batman didn't take a severe L for <laughs> once. Like I just felt relief. I was like, okay, as Chuck White, he fought pretty well. I I like seeing Chuck White. He's be rapidly yeah. becoming my my favorite character. Him and uh and Ken Colton rest in peace. Uh, are some of my standout characters from the series. So I like Chuck White. And like you said, uh, Dr. Daka, I'm really, really liking uh, what they've done with him. I would love to write that comic book series, Batman 43. Reach out to me, DC. So yeah, I think we're all going to give it fours. We will open the door. Boom, boom. Laka, 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 boom. Get on the floor. Laka, laka, boom, boom. Everybody's going to give it a four. You know, I think what really did it for me is that it held my attention this time. That's what gave it the separation from a three to a four for me. Yeah, it was engaging. It was they they moved the pace along pretty well. I will I will agree with you there. All right. Well, with that, let's get into the Gotham City mailbag. As always, we're thrilled to kick off these comments with special shout outs to our Crusaders Club members. These are the fine folks who have joined the Crusade and they enjoy early access to special long box episodes. We just threw up a new I Finished It from Delvin, where he talked about an amazing Spider-Man comic book story arc he just finished. And again, that's exclusive to our patrons uh, for several months, right? Yeah. We put them out publicly, like, it's almost like a year and a half later. <laughs> so if you want early access to that kind of stuff, that's just one of the main things you get. Uh, like I said, you get to vote on show content, as you'll uh, hear on our Amazing Spider-Man Chronicles episode. So much more, okay? So much more to include raffle entries, which we have coming up shortly. These are the folks reaping those benefits and giving some much appreciated support to the show. And Helica Woof. Oh. Oh. Hey, he's here now. So let me thank you in person, Auburn Elvis. Auburn Elvis, the champion of the scavenger hunt. 
spill beer. Blast it or stash it. Braxton Underwood. Captain Entropy. Clinton Robinson. That old battle wagon himself, Dave Collins. Ezra Gallo. Gerald Green. Jason Keen. Hmm. Jeremy L. All right, it's my turn. Ready? Jim Jummer, Jim Jummer, Jim Jummer, Jim Jummer. I hope you like Jim Jummer too. Joe Thomas. John Watson. Josh Strickland. Slacker. Candace Ward. Captivating Kathy Bright, the MVP. Mark Ross, also known as Cluck Trent. Or Cluck White. Monstrous Mark Hatherly. Maxwell Traver. Michael Wagner. Miranda W. Pimp Daddy Devins. PD Devins. Paul Hicks. Rick from Jeff and Rick Present. Rob Morgan. Ryan Daly. Samantha Maney. Sean Urbanski. Spidey. 67. Steve Cronin. And welcome to the Patreon membership to Spreadsheet. Tim Price. Tony Pennington. And the Toronto Cop. If we miss you on our list, we apologize. Keep in mind we record these episodes well in advance for release. If you're a recent edition, we'll add you soon. But if there's any problems at all, just send an email to contact at longboxcrusade.com and we will straighten it out. And if you're asking yourself, how do I become a Crusaders Club member? Well, it's pretty easy. Patreon.com slash Longbox Crusade. For as little as $1 a month, you get access to the amazing world of the Crusaders Club. Come check it out. You see these raffle prizes that we've got for you guys? $1 a month? I mean, come on. Some of y'all are giving more and we appreciate it. We appreciate each and every one of you and all the stuff that you do. But if you don't have that extra scratch lying around, but you still want to show us some love, write us a review on whatever platform you're listening to this on. Give us those a thousand stars or 15 thumbs up, whatever it is. Give us a good review and we'd love to read it on our next or upcoming shows. All right. Now we're going to get into our shares and retweet section. We used to read out the name of everyone who liked our tweets (laughs) and it was getting pretty lengthy, except on Saturday matinee theater. And (laughs) and so what we decided to do is, Hey, if you want to get a shout out on the show in the mailbag section, all you got to do is share retweet, or drop a comment. We'll still always read comments. Or, of course, voicemail, 707-532-5269, 707-532-LBOX. Pick up, Pick the, up phone. the phone. Okay, that's how you get to show up in the mailbag. So, for shares and retweets, who wants to read this this list? I will. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Okay, Pat, go ahead. Go for it, Pat. All right, we'll start off with Jason Lady. And that is it for shares and retweet section. Although, he did both share it on Facebook and retweet it on Twitter. Jason's I'll say there. Jason Do Lady again. <laughs> Do it again. Jason Lady. There you go. That Jason uh, Lady sounds like a real swell guy. <laughs> well, we do uh we do want everyone to uh to definitely get to be a part of this mailbag. Again, all you gotta do is share, retweet. Of course, we love the likes. All the people out there who liked it, hey, we like you back. But we definitely would love to hear your comments and your voicemails. So that's how you'll be getting in the mailbag moving forward. Again, doesn't really affect SMT too much, but uh, like Amazing Spider-Man Chronicles, that list was getting really, really long, which we appreciate, we appreciate and we love, now. but Definitely. that's how we do it. All right. And as a reminder, those voicemails can be sent at 707-532-5269, 707-532-LBOX. Pick up the phone. phone. Hey, guys, this is Auburn Elvis. I'm listening to the first episode of the Saturday Matinee Robin Hood episode. And one, I got to say, I love Dave Collins. His accent is so refined. I love it. Um, And he hit the nail right on the head when he said that the best part of this, I mean, the episodes are fun, but the best part of it is getting together and talking about it. And that is really what the podcast feels like when you're listening to it in the car. It's a bunch of people just talking about that episode we all saw. And that's really the charm. So keep it up, guys. Keep doing it. Thank you very much. And I believe we played one from Auburn Elvis on the last we uh, did, episode. Yeah. So be like Auburn Elvis and call 707-532-5269. Let us know what you're thinking about the Batman serial. We love, we love, love, love getting those and adding them to the show. Well, that's it for this episode of Saturday Matinee Theater. If you'd like to hear more from us in the realm of comic books, action films, and more, check out the Long Box Crusade. Pat, where can they find that? Well, Jason, I am glad you asked. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all the podcatchers out there. Also, we are on YouTube, or you can go to www.longboxcrusade.com, 
We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and again, at YouTube, at Longbox Crusade. So make sure you go like, subscribe, retweet, tweet, everything out there that you would do. Share whatever for us. It definitely helps grow the show. And if you'd like to hear from us on our track through all things James Bond, do you love James Bond? We love James Bond. You can check out Under Majesty's Secret Podcast. Jared, where can they find that? Under Majesty's Secret Podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all those podcatchers, I I think. Uh, I don't actually run that, so I can't verify what all podcasters it goes to. But uh, anyway, check that out at www.secretpodcast.podbean.com and go check us out on Twitter at OHMS Pod for your James Bond goodness. All right. And if you'd like to chat with us online, we can be found at Pat, kick us off. Well, Jason, I am glad you asked. You can find me on the Twitter at Christatos01. Delvin? You can find me on Twitter at DEE underscore RAY 1977. Jared. Jared. <laughs> well, thank you, Delvin. Uh, I am at Yard Sale Artist, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It's all at Yard Sale Artist. And if you want some of my art wares, just go to www.theyardsaleartist.com. Back to you, Jason. Okay, so this is episode n- number 69, right, fellas? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> that means next episode is number 70, which means it's a movie break. And I believe, gentlemen, it is my turn to pick an old-timey movie for us to watch. Woo-hoo. All right. Hey, I need some suggestions out there. I know i got some folks watch- watching this right now on YouTube. Uh, give me some good ideas. Let's uh, throw them in there. And then maybe I'll pick it. Uh, mm-hmm. So the we'll only see. rule is the movie has to be older than our oldest member, which is Jason. He was born in 1971. So the movie has to be 1970 or older. There you go. You got the rules. Give me some ideas out there and uh, maybe I'll pick it. Alligator well, people. Oh, we did that. <laughs> eat them up. Eat them up. <laughs> so next time, where will I see you? It's kind of up to you guys. But I'll see you there and we'll have fun. I guess LBC headquarters. <laughs> yeah. 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 And after that, we'll be back in Sherwood for us. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Please remember to replace the speaker on the post when you leave the theater. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another Do It It Live stream. I am Jared Albrick, and uh, over there is... Talking to me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing his button. Oh, hold on, hold on. I got the, I got the website. I, I just I got the website up on another thing it's for going chat. going flawlessly. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce yourself. Oh, it's me, Pat. DJ Christatos, hello. <laughs> and down below is... It's me, Chuck White. Chuck White. Chuck, Chuck White. Chuck in the house. Everybody loves Chuck White. Mm-hmm. Chuck White. <sighs> well, hi and howdy and hello to everybody. Uh, we are going to be doing an episode of Saturday Matinee Theater. We're going to be recording it live here in front of our live audience. Courtney Holland has already checked in. What's up, Courtney? And as usual, we'll be doing giveaways. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, we are, uh, we're heading back to Gotham City. We're going to be looking at episode 10, which is called Flying Spies. I'm not 100% sure why. There's like A. Yeah, why that was why? I don't that, was, know. that was why. We'll get into it. Anyways, uh, Batman <laughs> stealing the bad guy's car. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool or desperate? Pat, what do you think? Um, I think it was cool or desperate. I think it <laughs> I, I couldn't think decide. A, I need your help. <laughs> stealing the the other guy's car, cool or desperate? Well, I guess desperate, but in a story kind of a way that he yeah. had to do something. All right. Yeah, and I'm so, sure we could talk about the official discussion. I just want to get yeah. that first brush, because that was what was on my mind for this one. I was like, he straight up stole that guy's car. <laughs> Welcome, Albert Elvis, to the chat. Uh, Jason, what, quick brush on that. We'll talk more about it during the live the actual recording, but just, I just needed to know your your intentions on that one. I'm going to say it was cool. I mean, 
like we said in the military, every battle plan goes out the window at enemy contact. That's right. So you got to improvise. <laughs> but boy, improvised right there. He's getting it That's done. Right. That's right. No plan survives first contact with the enemy. Right. And uh, speaking of which, so we, uh, we've got Courtney here. We've got uh, Kathy. We've got Auburn Elvis. We've got the hardcore supporters. Uh, Pat, you capturing those names for me? You can nod if you want to because I know you're on mute. Yeah, I will go over. I got Courtney. I got Kathy. I got Pat. I got Auburn Elvis. Uh-huh. Wait, Stuck wait, yourself in wait. there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, no, it's, Pat, it's Patrick Keene. Yeah, Patrick Keene. <laughs> Patrick Keene. <laughs> Keene. Uh, hey, and I, do, I want to give out a shout out to uh, a guy who goes by the code name Spreadsheet. Yes, he just joined our uh, Patreon. In fact, I need to make sure Spreadsheet's on our on our list. I'm going to check our script right now. I don't know that I added him yet, but Spreadsheet just joined our Patreon, and I just want to say welcome to Spreadsheet. Just really cool that you decided to uh, to join up. I'd say that's Ooh. Excel. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, my God. We got to start the show. Brian Daly has joined the chat. Once oh, Ryan Daly. Kilmer Batman or Clooney Batman. Uh, I'm closer to Clooney. And when I say Clooney, I mean uh, Rosemary. That's as, that's as close <laughs> as we're going we're to get uh, to Clooney. All right, guys. Um, with the, uh, our police oh, yeah, uh, right now, Ryan down. Let me get Ryan down. Ryan. Uh-huh. And uh, another pet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two pets. Okay. <laughs> it's starting to, be, it's it's starting to become my new favorite character. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. I love to some Chuck White. It's growing on me. <laughs> All of a sudden, I kind of want it to be Chuck White instead of Matches Malone in the comic books. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, why can't it be Chuck White? <laughs> they busted out some Chuck White in a Batman comic. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that Bruce Wayne with a fake nose? No. <laughs> no, it's Chuck White. It's Chuck White. Anyway, I should save all this. Mark Ross, also known as Clark Chent. Or Clark. Clark Trent. Clark, also, <laughs> also known as Clark Trent or <laughs> Clark White. It's Cluck. It's Cluck. What did I say? Clark? Clark. Oh, Cluck. Okay, let me do it. <laughs> See, you messed me all up. I'm, oh, man.